life. <laughs> it really got us to thinking an awful lot. Like really a lot. And I'm not taking that trailer home. There's no way I'm going to drag that trailer home. It'll kill me. It's not that I can't drive. I've been driving heavy equipment and farm stuff and horse trailers. I can't drive that trailer home. It's, it's just, it's just, I could, but I won't. So we stored it there. We put it in Austin, picked up the phone. We called the dealer in Cornwall where we bought the trailer. And we said, what do you have that's comparable to the one you sold us? He says, what's wrong with the one we sold you? I said, we love it. What do you got in stock? And it had a brand new trailer, same manufacturer, larger, even worse to tow, two bathrooms, and it's got everything. I said, fine, we'll buy it over the phone. <laughs> that's what we did. We bought it over the phone, paid for it over the phone. We bought it. So now we've, we've set the trailer up with our horses, and we know we're doing the right thing. Now, by the way, these trailers cost us more than it would have cost us to build the house. Except, except, a thousand dollars a month. That's the cost of everything. Our hydro bill was a thousand dollars a month. Wow. On the farm. It was eight hundred dollars a month given this winter. We weren't there. Wow. We kept the heat up to 50 degrees, nothing else was running. Everything was turned off. We're paying $600 a month. Wow. So it's costing us less to live every day in this literally lap of luxury. And, and you can really get used to this thing, by the way. <laughs> For less money than our hydro bill. Wow. And we liked it so much, we want to see more of Canada. And I had a long discussion. I, I, we just got off the road on Sunday. And I'm really punch drunk. I'm, I'm really tired. There's a lot, 2,000 miles of driving. So we went back to the States to pick something up. I, and I, I had a long, and I met with Homeland Security. We had a long conversation with them about the rules, how long we could be in the States. And, and it's not quite what the IRS says it is. So, uh, we enjoy this lifestyle so much that between now and maybe the weekend, we're going to have a third trip. Because, yeah. It cost us almost $1,500 to drive the truck home from Austin to, to home, to Cornwall area, right? Forget the gas. The hotels are about 150 a night. And when you're traveling with a monster like him, not every hotel wants to take you. <laughs> the meals cost 75 to $100 a night. We figure on the cheap, the day is about $250. That's what it costs us to travel. We discovered a terrific secret. Every Walmart, and every Flying J lets you park for free. I don't like sleeping in hotels, and that's our business. I mean, we promote hotels. That's the agency. That's what we do. I don't like sleeping on somebody else's pillow or sheets. They don't like my dog. I'll tell you a funny story about the dog. So it, it's going to cost us less to buy a small trailer that's big enough to be really comfortable for Anne, myself, the dog, and the cat. And travel all over Canada this summer. Mm. The cost to pull that trailer, the new trailer that we're going to buy, from here to Austin is going to cost less than not having the trailer. Mm. I don't have to pay for hotels. Mm. Anne and I are sick and tired of eating in restaurants. I mean, you go to, you go to a Fast food joint is going to cost you $25, $30. And that's US, 30% exchange rate. So that's the true story about where we stand now. So, you know, we had people, I had people send me emails saying, We feel so horrible for your life. 
and I'm trying to think about whose life are they talking about. <laughs> so, now you know, in case anybody was interested or curious, now you know the true story. And the rest of the true story is I decided on the way to Austin, we did, I didn't know what I was going to do. I've been fighting my whole life. And they've been big fights. By my standards, it was just, I did what I did. But then you start talking about hundreds, hundreds of thousands of dollars per legal challenge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the Russell case wasn't my first rodeo. Notice that Texas talk? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we live with enormous stress. Bodyguards. When people found out who I was in Texas, this is not a word of a lie because I couldn't lie with my wife here because she'd call me out on it. <laughs> you have no idea. I had no idea. You know, Austin's a real lefty city. I mean, it's really left. <laughs> but everything around Austin is very conservative, like really conservative. And there are very few Canadians in that area. It's not like, like Florida with Quebec, very few. So this one guy from just a little northwest of Toronto, oh, you're a Canadian. And I didn't like this guy that much. <laughs> when he found out who I was, I mean, they have a big dog run, a huge dog park where the dogs would go out and play. He wouldn't let his dog play with Stryker. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a, that, I, I, this is true. He wouldn't let his dog play with Stryker. And wherever, wherever we walked on this property, it was, like, it was like a couple of miles long in terms of roads, paved roads and stuff. Nobody would say hello to me or Anne. In the mornings, or whenever we walked, hey, Stryker! <laughs> That's true too. Everybody loves Stryker, everybody, except this jerk. <laughs> and the reason he didn't like me was because I'm conservative, no. because of my blog. And also, I found out later, he was also a civil servant, retired. Oh. <laughs> and he reads the blog. <laughs> so he knew what I felt about him, not personally, then. So we're in the park, and we're talking to this guy from Minnesota, a lot of Minnesotans. And this guy says, and, and when we walked in, the guy from Larry, right? That was his name, Ed? Larry. So Larry takes his dog and walks away. <laughs> so this guy from Minnesota says, what's with him? I said, I guess he figured out that I'm a conservative and he doesn't like that. So the guy looks at me, and without skipping a beat, he says, does he realize he's in Texas? <laughs> So I uh, I was real tired before we left for Austin. I was tired, uh, right to the bone. I was I don't like to use the word demoralized, but I think I was. You can only take so much of a beating until you start to succumb. And I wasn't sure if I even wanted to continue writing. Uh, I will tell you that there are hundreds of thousands of people who read my blog. There are tens of thousands of people who routinely come to the website and forward a lot of the editorials. And it's remarkable how many people contribute to the blog. It's not a lot. It's about 75 people who routinely send $25, $5, $250, $1,000. That block's very expensive to maintain. You're paying for that list, that mailing list that goes out so the people who are on the list, you get an, an, get an advisory saying there's a new editorial post. I pay for every one of those that go up. So the more people who sign on for the free advisory, the more it cost me. Oh, okay. So I'm a victim of my own success. <laughs> At one point, there'd be so many people that I couldn't afford to send it anymore. We, we almost came to that point. And I asked, I never asked anybody for money. Never ever asked anyone on the blog, unless it's a specific 
thing, like to help finance the Russell case or whatever it is. So I finally said, it's, it's free to you, but it's not free to me. And I will write no matter what. But step up to the plate. If you can help out, please do that. Like just the, the cost, the, the, the monthly cost to the web uh, supplier and, and to my to my IT guy because you're always we're always having to, to to do something mechanically to the blog, and all of a sudden people stepped up to the plate. It's not like we were we weren't going to do this. It's not like I tried to make anyone feel bad. I don't know why. These are tough times, and most of the people who read the blog are in this age group. It's tough. You're not working. Pensions aren't going as far as we all thought they would go. Costs are going way up. It's tough. It's tough for everybody. And when I saw the kind of response, and if you read the blog and you read the comment section, the comments that come back, and they, they really, they're very uplifting. To me, I, I read everything. I read all the emails, unless people send me books, I don't read that. <laughs> people send me things that are insulting and just delete. I don't get a lot of that. Um, if there's real heavy criticism, not interested. If you don't like what I write, go read somebody else's blog. But I soon discovered that there's a real audience out there who want to hear common thought. Everybody thinks that they're the only guy in town that the system is dumping on. So when they read the blog, they realize, you know something? He thinks like me. Mm -hmm. We all think the same way. Some of us a little bit differently. Most of us, we understand. Our parents from the greatest generation in the world. The people who fought in, in, in the First and Second World War. They gave us the greatest countries imaginable, Canada and the United States of America. And then my generation, the boomers, we screwed it all up. <laughs> Our parents raised us with things that they never had, and they wanted more for us. And then all of a sudden, we all had to go to university. <laughs> and digging a ditch wasn't a, an honorable job any longer. So we all got degrees of some kind. When, when I, just to get off course, but not really, Scott Walker is the guy that I would like to see become the next president of the United States of America. And when I hear, when I hear someone on the left and media pundits, even on Fox News, criticize him because he didn't get a university education. I would like to put my fist to the TV. Wow. I didn't get a university education. I went to university. It wasn't for me. I left before I graduated. I went to work. I employed hundreds of people. I paid out millions of dollars in salaries. And now all the work that I did is going to pay some dumbass who sits behind a desk somewhere in Ottawa or Queens Park or somewhere to do nothing. And, and they'll look down on me because I don't have a Bachelor of Arts or a Bachelor of Commerce. I don't know anything about basket weaving. All I know what to do is work hard with my hands, with my mind, to sell, to hire people, pay salaries. And all the years that Ann and I have owned businesses, which is all the years, we've never missed a payday. I mean, we've missed our paydays. I can tell you that at a quarter to 12 at night, and I'd be outside the uh, National Bank with our credit cards, putting them in, taking out as much money as we possibly can, and then waiting until a quarter past 12 <laughs> to do it all over again so we can make a payroll. Nobody ever worked for us, not for one second, without getting paid everything that was coming to them plus. We never missed a paycheck. We never missed a commission check. We never missed a bonus. Nothing. Ever. Not an expense account, ever. But Ann and I would pay out thousands of dollars of salaries on a Friday, and on Saturday we would go to the grocery store trying to figure out which is the cheapest meat we can buy so we can have something to eat. 
The, the public sector don't tell you this. They don't know about this. What they know about is, I got a contract. Everybody else gets two weeks vacation, I get eight weeks vacation. Everybody gets a 4% vacation allowance as a deduction off the paycheck, they get an 8% deduction. I'll work until the day I die if I want to keep my lifestyle and put gas in the damn truck for the trailers. <laughs> They'll retire at 55 years old and worry about which crews they're going to go on next. Mm. I was telling Beth before the meeting started, the reason why hydro is going through the roof is, has nothing to do with the cost of hydro. The reason why the government has now laid off 250 nurses with more to come has nothing to do with the cost of medicine. It has to do with the pensions. <coughs> we have tens and tens of thousands of civil servants right across Canada, hundreds of thousands across Canada, tens of thousands just here in Ontario who are retiring at 55 years old, earning more money, excuse me, taking more money out of the system than many working families